Hey, this is Joe Gilder from Personas. Today, let's talk about the song page in Studio One, specifically the arranger window. In the last video, I went through the start page. Now we're gonna spend a couple of videos on the song page. There's, there's a lot going on. That's where you're gonna spend most of your time, I would imagine. So we can open a song here, or we can actually see that I already have a song open. Let's open that up. This is probably what you're expecting to see when you open up a piece of recording software. Now, within this song page, there are lots of different windows. This main window here is our arranger. Uh, some folks may call it like the editor. This is where a lot of the recording happens, but there are other windows that we can evoke, evoke, invoke? We can call up uh, as needed. Um, F3 will bring up our mixer which is just what you'd expect. You can see all your tracks, plugins, etc., faders. Uh, F4 brings up this inspector window on the left-hand side. Logic users will be used to something like this. This shows me information on each individual track and even on each individual piece of audio if I want to see that. F7 is something that I'll use all the time, which brings up this browser window on the right-hand side. You'll notice I can get to all these by clicking down here or using keyboard shortcuts. I never use the buttons here, but they're there. Edit window is this. I never use that. That's why I didn't show it to you. Mix window there, browser window here. So here is um, where you can access your effects and your instruments, as well as loops and files and the pool and all that stuff. But the main one that I access here uh, is the effect section where I can see all my plugins and drag them where I want them to go. More on that in another video. But let's look at just the arrange window for a minute and specifically kind of some stuff to know about the song window. Now, depending on where you're coming from, this may seem um, it's going to be different and there are going to be buttons that you're not familiar with and you may think things seem cluttered. Uh, but I assure you, that's normal. When I look at a different DAW from Studio One, whatever that DAW is also looks cluttered to me at first glance. Let's take a look at the bottom at first. Um, you have a lot of just useful information down here. There's not much actionable that you can do down here, but there is some useful information. We can see how our CPU is doing. We can see, uh, have a view for seconds and bars on a little timer that will roll through as we hit play, which is, which is nice. Got our transport controls here. Uh, here is the place where I would focus your attention just a little bit. For one, we can change our tempo here by just clicking and typing, or we can tap on the tempo word, dun -dun, and it will change the tempo. I've just ruined my song. Let's undo that. Um, we can change the key of the song, which I never use. Uh, here is the metronome setting. So we can turn the metronome on and off, which is just our click track or press the letter C to do that. Uh, here is where we get some settings for the metronome. Do we want, you can see all of this, it's pretty self-explanatory. You can change the click sound. You can add in an off beat if you want or not. You can have pre-count, pre-roll, how much, how many bars, all that stuff. These are kind of the settings I tend to like to use. And then the C button turns that on and off. And then here, this little circle here turns on that pre-count. I almost never use that. Maybe you like it, maybe you don't. Uh, and then a few things over here to note. Uh, these are some different things about recording. The two that I use are here. This is pre-roll on and off, and this is, what do they call it, auto punch. We can access those by pressing the I and O keys on our keyboard, and it switches between those, just so you know. So pre-roll is, I've got the cursor placed here, and I hit record. It's going to go back in my case, two bars, and let me hear two bars before it starts recording. Super handy if you're recording yourself or just recording someone and you wanna say, hey, you got two bars before that chorus, and they'll say, great, it's super handy. And then auto punch is where it will, you can select a section using the loop section here. Start here, hit record. When it gets to here, it will record during this section and then will automatically punch out, similar to the quick punch functionality inside of Pro Tools. All right, so that's the bottom section here. Up at the top, there's a lot. Over here, this is more advanced stuff you don't really have to know about. It has to do with automation. Here is how like your cursor works, and I'll go over that more in an editing video, but just know all the tools you might expect to see as far as what your cursor can do can be found here. I actually never change these. I leave it as is, and I can do things like this, and this, and this, without ever having to come up there. I'll show you that in the editing video to follow. Uh, over here is where we get uh, our macro window. We can do some quantizing and some strip silence and all the stuff you kind of want to do when you want to get into bending audio. Again, I don't use those a lot, but they're there. 
This is a really handy tool though. If you're new to Studio One and you're not sure what you can do where, click on this question mark and you'll notice this bar, this black bar opened up. And then look what happens. When I hover over anything, you'll see a bunch of different options show up. It's telling me what I can do. So right now I'm hovered over the upper portion of a piece of audio and it's telling me I can use the arrow tool, I can create a range, I can include range, and as I press modifiers, as I press command, it shows me things I can do while pressing command. As I press alt or or option on the Mac, you'll tell me things I can do with that. It's a really handy kind of cheat sheet that just just wherever the mouse is, it tells me things that I can do. Super handy, use that, it's like a built-in tutorial. Over here, this is how our grid works, right here, see those lines up and down? If you're using recording to a click and you want things to map to the grid, you'll wanna set up the grid here, and then this is where you turn on and off snap, which is where things will snap to the nearest grid line. Uh, ripple edit, auto scroll, I don't use ripple edit too much, that's for like podcasting stuff. Auto scroll, if you press F, that means when the cursor gets to the end of the screen, it will automatically jump over to the next section. Sometimes you want it to, sometimes you don't. I use F for that. Um, cursor follows edit position, I don't use that. This is the scratch pad, uh, which I don't use much either. So those are the things that are there. Like I said, I'm not gonna show you how to use every single thing inside of Studio One. I'm gonna show you the things that I do use. One thing I know everybody asks when they first start using Studio One, this is the way I like my play button to work. I hit play doodly doodly do using spacebar. I hit play again and it goes back to where it started. That's kind of the way we're used to things working. It doesn't usually default to that. So let me show you how to change that. Come up to transport, go to options, return to start on stop. Make sure that's enabled. Otherwise, you'll go like this. You'll hit play and then you'll stop playback and the cursor will stay right there. And it'll just keep stopping and moving kind of like a tape machine or a cassette player. Nothing wrong with that, maybe you like working that way, but if you want it to go back to where it began, use that return to start on stop option, and then every time you stop playing, it goes back to the beginning. Super handy, keeps you from having to fast forward and rewind a whole lot. Uh, I'll get into the rest of this when I talk more about editing, but just so you know, if you click in this section up here and drag down, you will zoom out or zoom in. If you drag up, you will zoom out, and then you can just scroll around the session using your scroll up and down, and holding down shift and using scroll to go left and right. Or if you have a trackpad like me, you can just scroll up and down left and right to your heart's content. Uh, that's super handy. We can also zoom things in and out. Down here, we can choose a size. I never do that. What I do is I hold down command on the PC or command on the Mac, I think it's control on the PC, and then scroll up and down and it automatically zooms everything together. So even if I have this particular track super zoomed in, as soon as I hold down command and start scrolling, it puts them all the same size. And if I scroll to the left and the right while holding command, uh, it will also zoom in and out horizontally. A lot of cool features. You, it, it's, it's new. Most systems I've used don't work that way, and it can be a little nerve-wracking at first, but trust me, this is the best way to navigate a session of all the softwares that I've used over the years. This one is super handy once you get the hang of it. Okay, that wraps up this video. The next video in this series, I'll deal with the mixer window and walk you through some of the cool functionality that we have available there inside of Studio One. If you liked this video and you want to see more like it, be sure to click the like button and also subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on future videos. As always, thanks for watching. See you in the next one.